Yes, it's kill the music. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? We're back for another video. Uh, I am uh Caramel Rail. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, as you guys can see, we are a little earlier tonight because I want to go to bed tonight, okay? I want to go to bed and give me some rest a little earlier. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and knock this show on out so you guys can get your uh, Caramel Rail fix for the night, honey. Yes, yes, and yes. Thanks for being here, DeBear. Uh, Miss Spoken for. thanks for being here. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Adrian Wiley. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I see y'all coming in. Come on in. Olga Medina, hi. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. All right, let me go ahead and get my disclaimer out the way. Everything said in the video is alleged and in my opinion and is used for fair use and entertainment, okay? Yes, thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for being here. I know everybody else is going to be coming in here soon and probably watching some other uh, shows as well. That's fine because y'all know everybody kind of watch almost the same people. It is fine. It's great. Let's support, honey. Support, all right. support everybody, okay? Support everybody. I don't care, child. Thanks for being here, uh, Samara. Samara. Uh, thanks, Inga. Thanks, Olga. Thanks, Natasha. Thanks, uh, Samra. If I said it right, I hope I did. Uh, thanks, Angela. Natasha, everyone. I see y'all coming in. Let's go ahead and get started because we've got some great topics for you guys, okay? Yes, we do. Mm. I ate that food. I hope I don't have indigestion. Okay, so uh, first topic, first topic, first topic. Honey, we kind of talked about destiny this morning. Um, in Car Chronicles, uh, y'all know that she is making her return back to Love and Marriage Huntsville. Hold on, I gotta roll my eyes. All right, I feel, I think I feel better. <laughs> I think I feel better. I'm not happy about that because Destiny, she didn't give anything. She don't like to share her business, and I'm nosy. So if you're coming on the show, I think you need to share your business. You need to tell all your business because I want to know it. I mean, damn, why else would you be coming? Why would you be coming on the show? I need to know your business. So if you're not going to tell your business, don't be on the show. Like, I'm nosy. Uh, since I told y'all Diddy had adopted a white girl <laughs> and they're looking for her. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. <sighs> Honestly, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I really think he, I'm going to say allegedly, since we under the Fair Use Act. Allegedly, I feel like he might have trafficked this young girl. Okay. I, I think that she has something to do with the trafficking and probably uh, helping recruit. Because y'all know that they have recruiters while they are trafficking we'll talk about that a little later because diddy is on the radar for tonight again i'm tired of talking about his ass too but y'all know when we have new developments and stuff that's real juicy like i like juicy stuff <laughs> i ain't going there because we went there this morning i ain't going there, ain't going there. I, ain't, I ain't going there but i like juicy information okay so yeah uh, what you're saying says, I think uh, Carlos King brought her back for some drama with son. Of course, of course. It's going to only help their, she's going to feed into their storyline and they're going to feed off of her, okay? Obviously, their storyline is not strong enough to not have her, it's looking like. Uh, but, you know, they're going to pit, they're going to pit Destiny against Sonny and um, and uh, Moses. You already know that because she's already put that narrative out there that Sonny stole her man. Lies, because you already broken up with this boy months before Sonny even stepped in months before i mean yeah that's already been confirmed uh but it's gonna get into the show child now fans are uh said to be outraged okay fans are said to be outraged finding out that destiny is returning to love and marriage huntsville I, I ain't gonna say i'm outraged i'm a little disappointed i'm a little disappointed because i feel like as faithful viewers of this show okay i've watched since season one I keep up with everything going on in between the show, out of the show, on the show, around the show, like everything about this fucking show. I I think that as fans and watchers of the show, we deserve great storylines. We deserve a great season. We deserve to see some uh, validity in their lives and what's really going on with them. I don't feel like they're going to give us that this season. I feel like it's going to be more lies and bullshit, just like we've gotten for six seasons before. I'm just saying that's just that's just my that's just my you know prediction for season seven coming up. Martell ain't gonna have no storyline. They're gonna use this whole jail bullshit. We don't care. We already know you were locked up. You're about to be locked up again. We don't care about you, Martell. You ain't got shit to talk about. You ain't got no businesses. Your wine ain't selling like you. You might need to scroll through the vineyards again and find something else to do because ain't nobody checking for you on that. 
I mean, what what, what you gonna talk about? Mel don't want to film with you, so what you gonna do? Maybe he gonna film with Destiny. That might be that might help his storyline because don't nobody else want to film with his ass. The Scots they don't um they don't unfollowed him. They ain't fooling with him. So I don't know. I don't know y'all. Um, but they said the fans are kind of outraged about, about Destiny returning. Um, like I said, I was telling y'all this morning, if you guys follow me on my Caramel Rail show, I posted um uh Nell Fletcher's most recent uh IG live. Okay, coincidentally, guess what? She removed it. She's removed her freaking live, y'all. I said, okay, because y'all know Destiny was in her live looking all funky in the background, like she didn't want nobody filming her. Girl, you need somebody to film you because ain't nobody else thinking about you. So you should be happy to be in her live. So really, that was, uh, I think Nell kind of revealed something she wasn't supposed to, which is probably why she took it down. Maybe Carlos got to her and said, hey, girl, what the fuck are you doing? We haven't announced yet that Destiny was coming back because I think Destiny was supposed to be a surprise, you guys, for season seven. So nobody was supposed to know that she was on this damn girl's trip. All right. That's just my interpretation. I don't think that Carlos and them wanted anyone to know that Destiny was going to be on this trip. So when Nell did this damn live with Destiny in the background, here she goes. And there's no coinky dink that she done took the whole damn live down. If you go and click on it now, it says that it's unavailable. Live is no longer available. So she removed it from her um, IG stories or her live or whatever it was. Um, because it's, it's, it's a lot of outrage online now with Destiny, with news about Destiny returning. Oh, yeah, the, the Love and Marriage Huntsman fans are not happy about that. They're not happy. A lot of people saying, oh, we really not going to watch the show now. I've been looking at comments because I read comments. A lot of people are saying, oh, we really not watching. We really going to black out the show now. So people have already been black, blacking out. So think about now that they know that Destiny is returning back to this damn show. That's going to make the ratings go, pew. That's the whole crash and burn. So, yes, yeah, she was on a girl's trip looking all crazy. Uh, Stormy was said to be um, removed from the girl's trip. Now, from my understanding, there was some words. There was some type of altercation that happened. Um, if you saw Melody's friend, Shanita, y'all know she posted on her um, thing saying that um, on her IG live saying that uh, sometimes you got to almost slap a bitch out here. So, y'all know, honey, how Stormy mouth get because y'all know Stormy trying to be out here on the hood hood. Uh, and uh, they're saying that she had to be removed from the girls' trip. So I think she left way earlier than everyone else because of some type of altercation. I think she kind of had some words, I think, with Melody on some stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. But uh, yeah. So uh, 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 that that's that, that's what it gave. There were some words that had was had. Now Melody uh, also made a post because y'all know she always speaking subliminals as well. She never just straight out say it. But if you read between the lines, you know what she's talking about and who. Um, she pretty much made a post saying, uh, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. I think I shared it with you guys on one of my lives earlier this week. Um, so it's been a lot of stuff going on, a lot of developments going on in terms of Love and Marriage Huntsville and what the girls are doing, child. The girls is out here girling, okay? The girls are out here girling, okay? So they're saying that Stormy Honey had to be removed from the girls' trip. So I think they had some some little shenanigating going on on the damn trip. Some, some shenanigating, okay? If you be shenanigating on the trip, your ass got to go. So that's what it gave y'all. So the responses, the response, like I said, from the fans of Lower Match Huntsville were mostly negative in terms of Destiny returning. They're not happy about it. They are, though. They are intrigued about how the dynamic with Sunny, which y'all know was uh, on production. She was one of the producers on the show. So they are happy to kind of see the dynamic between this new person and what she's going to be bringing. Nobody really knows who the hell she is because she used to work behind the scenes of Love and Marriage Huntsville. So for now, for her to be now on the show uh, and for us to see the dynamic where Moses, who said he didn't never want to be on the damn show. So it's a whole kawinky thing now that he's going to be on the show, but with somebody else and not Destiny. <laughs> This man kept telling Destiny. I think Destiny wanted to make him her storyline for the longest when she was on the show because she and LeBarrett weren't together anymore. But he always had an excuse as to why he could not film with her. He was on some type of probation. He had on an ankle monitor. Y'all remember? He could not fly out of the state. So every time Destiny saw him, she had to fly to him. So now, season seven, the motherfucker about to be on the show. He married to somebody else, which is supposed to be in, uh, Destiny's whole confidant, is what Destiny called her. She said, oh, we were friends. We used to go out for drinks and out to dinner. And I used to call her up and talk to, talk to her about when me and Moses were having problems. And then she turned around and now her and Moses are together when they told me that they were just cousins. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of not how it happened, Destiny. But we'll take the lie, girl, because we know you love to lie. So we'll, we'll listen to the lie, but I don't believe the shit. But that's that's what it is. So I'm I'm interested to see what they're gonna be bringing. 
I'm interested. A lot of people are interested, are really interested in Moses and Sonny Mintz, honey. So I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't really know the girl like that. Um, but we're gonna get to know her this season, honey. So she's from behind the camera, in front of the camera, and she done took your man, okay? Mm-hmm. Destiny is out here on her Nivea, honey. Destiny said, don't mess with my man, honey. I'm going to be the one to give it to you. Y'all remember the song that used to be my song? Don't mess with my man. I'm going to be the one to give it to you. That used to be my jam. But uh, yeah, she messed with your man, girl. And she up and married him, girl. And it said that she's supposed to have a bun in the oven, too. Y'all ain't hear it from me, but you heard it right here. <gasps> yes, you did, girl. All right, so let's continue, though, because there is more news, honey, I know y'all can use out here. All right, so Portia Williams, honey, Portia Williams, we got to talk about her again. I'm sick of her. I'm sick of Simon. Portia's sister now, Portia's sister, Lauren, if you guys follow Real Housewives of Atlanta, you know she has a sister named Lauren who looks very, very similar to her. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So Portia's sister, Lauren, honey, has some words for Simon Gufradi out here for the way that he's been out here lying and popping up on social media and treating her sister, uh, Portia, honey. Y'all know Portia had to come up over there to Simon House Child with the goons. I said, not the goons, girl. Yes, girl, the goons. So Portia had to get the goons because Simon went up over there and locked the damn door, child. Done locked the damn, done changed the locks to keep Portia from going up in there getting her stuff, okay? Same shit he did to Fallon. I told y'all about that before. So Port Simon is very petty like that. I'm like, you got to look at patterns when you deal with ain't shit type of guys because they do the same shit to each and every person. That's the type of person, that's the type of time that Simon is on. He's very petty. He's very female-like. He's very moist, okay? Yeah, he's very moist. He's a moist-ass ninja, okay? Yes, he's a moist. If you use abbreviations, it says man, but I don't see nothing man. I don't see nothing manish about him. He's very femaleish. He does. He's got a lot of female tendencies. It would not surprise me. It would so not surprise me if Simon wore panties. It, it wouldn't. But Tara. Uh, so uh Lauren, honey, Lauren, uh, Portia's sister done got Simon's panties in a bunch out here as she goes off on him. And she uh has some things to say to his ass, okay. She also alluded that um, that he was out here leaking fake and untrue stories about uh, Portia, okay, and about him and Portia, all right? And she talks about their situation pending the divorce. Now, I do have the screenshot where she uh, actually addressed him. Let me pull that for you. Let me pull that for you, honey. Let me pull that for you, honey. Okay, hold on. Give me, give me a second, y'all. Give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. Okay, yes. Yeah, so she alludes to the fact that uh Simon uh was talking shit about Portia. What did I do with my um uh, give me a second, y'all? Hold on. What did I do with it? What did I do with it? What did I do with it? Ooh, I'd be so prepared, but look at me. Hold on, guys, hold on. Okay, hold up. Okay, hold up, I gotta pull it on my phone. I thought I uploaded this shit down. I'm working too fast. I'm working too fast. Look at me. All right, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me go, let me go to let me go to my second source here, child. Could have sworn I uploaded this shit. What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? All right, hold on. Mm -mm -mm. I know I got the shit. I know I got it. I know I got it. I know I got it. Okay, so she she says to Simon, she says that um she says that I know that you're um planning to use this to get on the show. So she's trying to say that he's alluding to the fact that he's trying to get on the show. She says that I know you want a spot on this damn show, and um that you continue to use social media to secure your spot on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now it was already said that he was going to be making appearances on the show. She was pretty much telling him to stop talking crazy about Portia and that he is lying about the uh recent developments to where Portia just popped up over there with goons. So she's saying, the sister Lauren is saying that that's not true and that he's actually continuing to go on social media to try to secure a spot on the show. But I don't know if he realizes that the men of the show don't get married. Did y'all know that? I mean, not uh, not married, but paid. The men of Real Housewives of Atlanta don't get paid unless you've made some type of an arrangement with uh, said cast member, kind of like how Sheree and Martell did when Martell agreed to be Sheree's uh, storyline on Real Housewives of Atlanta. She paid him a percentage of what she got paid from Bravo because the men do not get paid. 
So if you're bringing somebody on the show and they're going to be your storyline, your man or whatever, you make a deal with them and say, hey, I'm going to pay you 10, 15 or 20 percent for you to come on here and be my man. Kenya Moore did it for years. <laughs> Kenya Moore did it for years. How many men have we seen Kenya bring on the show? I wait. Y'all remember the tow truck guy? What was the guy? Walter. Y'all remember Walter? She paid Walter. And Walter was in a whole relationship. <laughs> Walter was in a whole relationship, and as soon as that season went off, Walter got married to the girl he was in a relationship with and had a baby and turned right around and had another baby. So he was never serious with Kenya. That's why Kenya was like, come and take a shower with me. Y'all remember when they went on a little cash trip and Walter went there. Walter was there like, bitch, I'm acting. We're, re we're not really together. Like, snap out of it. Now, you said you were going to pay me to play a role. Y'all remember Walter? He was like, Walter. <laughs> Come here and take a shower with me. He was like, bitch, cut it out. I'm never taking a shower with you. And it's not going to start today. Damn it. Now, nah, I'm just acting. I'm just there for my percentage. Now, nah. you will not be looking at my strong in the shower because I'm only here for my percentage. All right. That's what, said. That's what he let her ass know. And she's standing there like, uh -huh. then she started talking about getting married at the table. Y'all remember that shit? I was like, girl, you laying it on thick. <laughs> Girl, she gonna make him earn this fifteen percent in here, okay? She was like, "Yeah, so um, so when are we um, when I'm I'm thinking marriage." He's like, "Bitch, I'm thinking not." <laughs> yeah, not with you. The girl back at the house, like we've talked about it. Me and her, we've talked about it. Me and you, not so much. <laughs> Kenya was laying it on thick as hell. So then after Walter, y'all remember after Walter? What was the other crazy guy? The one that broke out of window child. He was on his Jasmine Sullivan over there, child. Child, what was his name? Why well, I can't remember his name. <laughs> the dude, little fitness dude. Y'all help me in the comments, child. <laughs> I said, girl, you don't went to you don't went from somebody to, from Walter Child to tow truck uh, driver guy that won't even really check it for your ass like that. Then you done came over here to this fool that done told everybody on the show, child, that he done blew your back out in the back of the Jeep, child. I said, not in the back seat of the Jeep, girl. <laughs> was it Brandon? No, that don't sound right. That that sound that name don't sound right. It's close, but it don't sound. Y'all remember though, his ass was crazy. Okay, this motherfucker was on his Jasmine Sullivan. Yo, pulled up over that can to uh, Kenya's house while she was filming, child, and hopped his ass up out the car. <laughs> so, I'll bust the windows out your car and did just that. Bust the windows right out the right out the damn door. I said, well, hot damn, right there on her garage. Y'all remember that shit? Ken was like, and this is what he did. He came over. I saw him when he got out on the camera. And he threw something and he broke the damn windows in my garage door here. I was like, well, bitch, you knew he was crazy. <laughs> he done told everybody he done dug you out in the back of the damn Jeep. Where did she find these clowns? Kenya. Girl, you done paid a plethora of guys to be on the show. But that's that's what it gives, y'all. So anyone that they, Sheree had to do it with Martell, and it was said that she didn't pay Martell his money. Yeah, because y'all know he broke, y'all. Martell's trying to get money from everybody. Martell's out here trying to sell Girl Scout cookies and everything, because you know he a whole female, too. He out there on the corner, child, at any grocery store he can find out there selling Girl Scout cookies, child, with his little Girl Scout skirt on, child, and his little Girl Scout pin on, child. Yes, I'm Martella. Would you like to buy some Girl Scout cookies? Because my baby mama didn't give me no child support. I tried to take her to court and get some child support, but they told me, get the fuck out of here, okay? Yeah, he was on that bullshit. I said, boy, boy. <laughs> Martell, sit your broke ass down, okay? <laughs> the court said, you don't get the fuck out of here wasting our time. We thought you had a case, Martell. We thought you had a case. This motherfucker was trying to get every kind of support he could get. Child support, spousal support, uh, Melody support. WAP support. He wanted every kind of damn support he could get. They was like, get your ass out of here. Get your bald-headed, elf-eared ass up out of here. You're not getting any support. Okay? Support your ass up out of here. But, uh, yeah, so Portia's sister, honey, is stepping up for her because she is tired of Simon's ass out here. Steady, <laughs> steady cause of confusion. Every day, every day Simon's ass is on line, y'all, on some bullshit. I'm sick of him. All right, so Portia sent a text message. There are some text messages that have been leaked between, but twins. I'm, I like between. I know it's between, but but twins are uh, Simon and Portia, child. Yes, child, WAP support. Any kind of support his ass can get, child, because he needed it. 
He need a child. He need it. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up these damn uh things that, that Portia had to say to uh Simon. I'm sick of them, Lord. I'm going to read this bullshit. But if they got some stuff on tomorrow, y'all, I'm going to have to debate if I'm going to talk about them tomorrow. Because Simon, I'm sick and tired of your chicklets teeth having ass. Y'all know his teeth look like chicklets. I'm sick of him. Let's get to these damn things before I start swinging off on his ass in here. Simon making me want to swing off on him in here. Damn. You never seen nobody so damn irritating in my life. Oh, he made me want to punch the air in this bitch. Oh, all right. So can y'all see my screen? Can everybody see my screen? All right. Let me get over here. Let's get back. Can y'all see my screen? <laughs> Someone make you want to swing off on his ass. He is so fucking annoying. All right, so let me pull it up over here because that I can't hardly see that shit. Hold on. Let me go. Let me do two screens over here, honey, because I want y'all to be able to see this bullshit. Because baby, oh Lord, precious Lord, take my hand, Lord, please take my hand, Jesus, and lead me on because I'm tired of these two. I'm tired, Lord. I'm like a runaway slave. I'm tired of Simon and Portia. All right, <sighs> give me a minute, Lord. All right, I'm back. Jesus Christ. All right, so let's read, honey. Y'all can read with me. It says that the, it, uh, if the 42-year-old mother fails to comply with his demands that the entrepreneur suggests that the court inflict punishment, child, on the Real Housewives of Atlanta star. So Simon has some demands that he's asked the courts uh, since their divorce filing. As we guys know, uh, Portia is the one that filed for divorce. Simon is issuing his demands now that Portia has issued her demands, saying that he shall not get rid of paperwork and or delete anything or she will have him sanctioned. Now, uh, this is what Simon is requesting. It says that Portia is further notified that a failure to comply with this notice may result in sanctions. Now, he's trying to sanction her for any destruction of failures to preserve any such evidence, including without limitation, adverse interference against petitioner at trial. Sanctions okay as well as an award of expenses and attorney's fees necessitated girl oh i like that word by such conduct says that his notice stated there's more all right shout out to radar online this is what the, the text also reveals uh says that there are more than one or two reasons that we are in this place this is what uh portia is saying to simon okay follow with me there are more than one or two reasons that we are in this place and I'm forced to make this decision. She says, I will make sure that they are written and listed for you to see. She says, there is nothing in this world that would have told me that I would have to divorce you or that I would even contemplate leaving you even for a day. Girl, it's only 15 months. What the? All right, moving on, says that, however, what is between us rocks our foundation to the core. So you got a whole foundation for after 15 months. Go off. Moving on, honey. It also goes on to say, she says that I have always trusted you, girl, from day one. When I took your hand, honey, when I had took at your hand and started on this journey, honey, of only 15 months said that I've always stressed to you that I feel safe with you, even though I just met you, okay? And how important for someone like me that is, okay? Because, you know, I you know I jump from man to man to man, but you special, even though we only been together 15 months, and I only married you after knowing you only for two months. But uh, she goes on to say that I've also loved it, you girl, through, uh, through and through, girl. Child, get out of here. Says, but all of this shows me that you have not cared for me the same. And that is a huge problem for me, child. Says, it's your job is to protect PJ and I, and you have not. Okay. So that's what she had to say to Simon, girl. Girl, you would have thought they was married for 85 years the way she laid it on so thick, girl. Portia. <laughs> I loved it, you through and through. Girl, get the fuck out of here. You was only with him for 15 months. You only married him after two months, which is so early when you have a child and you introduce your child to this person that you're still getting to know. That was very irresponsible of you. Women, stop doing that bullshit. When you're dating someone, your children should not know them that early on because what if the shit don't work out? What if they become psychos all of a sudden? Then you don't introduce your child who's getting used to this person. You probably start to call him stepdad and all this other shit. And then look at what happened. So now you had to pull this person away from your daughter who's gotten used to him, who he's been kind of sort of like a father figure in addition to her father, which we all know to be Dennis. 
And now he's no longer in. <laughs> Somebody said she got a whole Hallmark card. I can't. Y'all be held in the comments. I love it, though. <laughs> y'all are. See, y'all been hanging around me too much. I'm messy. Now y'all asses out here messy. Okay. The messy spirit have, <laughs> have rubbed off upon y'all. And I love it. Okay. Y'all know I love it. Y'all love a little messy. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Okay. <laughs> Child. But uh, let's get back to what I was saying. And back in the scene, let me get back serious. But anyway, as I was saying, Okay, all jokes aside, do not be introducing someone that you're still getting to know when you have children, because then it can kind of confuse them. Her daughter is what, barely five, six years old. So she's not around her father all the time, like her dad is in her life. But Simon is actually living in the house with this child or was living in the house. So he's getting more time with said child, this child named PJ, Pilar, something like that. Pilar Janae, I think that's the baby's name. Uh, that's a cute name. She's a cute little girl. She looks just like a damn daddy. Uh, but uh, don't 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 do that, ladies. Don't do that, especially when you have girls. Okay, boys too, but especially when you have girls, because then you're teaching them that it's okay to just jump into situations. And no doubt, there have been some some probably some very effed up situations in their relationship, probably in front of that child. There's no telling what this child has seen. Because now Portia is saying that Simon had women coming in and out of the house during the time that they were married. That he had women coming in and out of the house. You got to be careful with that. You got to do your homework on people. That's why I said dating is so imperative. It's so important to date, guys. And I know a lot of times we want to kind of jump the gun and, and kind of move a little fast because you're ready to get to the next level. But dating is so important. Take level by level by level by level. Now, you want to break them off and give them a little walk. That's your business. I ain't going to never tell nobody what to do with their walk. But just be careful in the process. Your dating process never make uh permanent decisions while you're dating okay when you're first meeting them never do that because then you wait you wind up with heartbreak look at Portia you've invested all of this stuff into this man in such a short time and now it's all over in 15 months he locking you out the house it's coming out now that he's been seeing other women now he's putting other women throwing other women up in your face saying they look better than you oh she's prettier than you just this petty irregular bullshit like that when you thought that she was the most beautiful thing when you were in a good place with her. And see, that's how people act so fucking petty. That's always the go-to whenever you break up with somebody. Oh, she looks better. My new girl looks better than you. My new girl do this better than you. Oh, she's this, 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 and this. Shut the fuck up, Simon. The next girl you will get with after this one is going to be the same bullshit. You have the same pattern. You did the same thing with Fallon. Like, get out of here. Get out of here. We're going to move on past him, child. I ain't got to move for Simon. I'm sick of him already, child. I just want to throw it right here on my damn desk. For real. Simon, I'm sick of you. Get your tick, chiclet teeth and your damn bowling ball head up off my screen. I'm done with you. Moving on. All right. So, uh, Cryrese, honey, y'all, we all know him to be Tyrese. I like Ty Tyrese as long as he's singing. But when Tyrese get to talking, baby, he make me feel like Simon, child. You make me feel like Simon. Y'all see my hands? <laughs> when my hands get like this, that means I'm fucking irritated, okay? When I get like this, when I get like this. Simon and 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 Cry Reese, they both make me feel the same. Y'all irritate the fuck out of me. All right, so let's let's continue, child. Cry Reese, child is out here speaking on Diddy's recent run in with the feds. Now, what they got to do with you? Now, we didn't hear this much out of you when you were talking about this damn child support. Okay, your baby mama was out here talking about this child support. She done took your ass back to court because you ain't paid nothing on your child support. But oh, now you got so much to say about Diddy, child. Oh, you got so much to say about Diddy. You want to do interviews? You want to sit up and do lives? You didn't have that energy, though, when it was time to talk about that damn child support. You wanted everybody to march down there to the courthouse, step child, but you and Ben Crump, Ben Crump said, I shall not. Bitch, I have a life. I have other cases. Ben Crump said, bitch, I shall not. March for you for what? What, what, what we marching for? Motherfucker, I'm not Martin Luther King. You got to march your ass down there and pay that money. Okay. That's what you better do. Mm-hmm. Your ass sitting home. Why you got to act? like that she ain't acting like that you're supposed to pay child support when you run up in them guts raw and she get pregnant child support follows when y'all gonna learn <laughs> when y'all gonna learn you beat this up and i get pregnant bitch you want child support that's just that's just what go with it okay step one <laughs> cut the ceiling fan on step two bang my back out step three i'll tell you i'm pregnant step four go down there and pay that money and all the way in that order <laughs> You're going to learn today. He's talking about, she told me when we got together, his ass crying on damn live. She told me, this him on live. She told me when we got together that she did, that she won't get with me for my money. What you thought was going to happen when you get this woman pregnant, y'all married? 
And she decided she don't want to be with your ass no more. She waited right good till his ass got on a plane to go film a movie and packed all her shit up and had the U-Haul back up there and, and take all her shit out of the house. And he done came back home to the empty house. I said, see, she already knew she was leaving you. You think she woke up that morning and was like, today is the fucking day. Today I'm out this bitch. No, she already was tired of your shit because he, he another petty one. He is another petty one. Tyrese, you petty. You are. Let's go and get to this though. We're gonna let's go and get into this, honey. Let's share screen so y'all can see this bullshit with me. Because baby, I couldn't believe it either. I said, I know the fuck you ain't talking about somebody else's stuff where you ain't even paying your damn child support. You in arrears out this bitch. But let's go and get into it, child. Don't let me tell you, let him tell you. With his broke at well, he ain't broke. He want everybody to think that he's broke to avoid paying this damn child support, but your ass about to go to jail here if you don't pay it here real soon, okay? Let me get on into it. All right, here we go. That's him. All right, let's hear That we just don't care. Up and forward. Now it seems like there's so much shit coming across our timelines that we just don't care anymore. We don't care. So I don't want anyone to confuse me for, I mean, last night before I went to sleep, I was praying. I found myself praying for Diddy's kids. I was thinking about Justin and Christian Combs and thinking about the twins who go to school with my daughter. Um, they, My daughter and his twins have been at pretty much every birthday party and then I'm just thinking to myself, see, a lot of people will go after Diddy, beat him down for whatever he's either did or being accused of, uh, allegedly. Uh, and and then it's all about him, right? And I was thinking about the family. I was thinking about the kids. I was thinking about now it seems like there's so much shit coming across our timelines that we just don't care anymore. So sure don't. We don't care so i don't want anyone to confuse me for i mean last night before i went to sleep i was praying i found myself praying for diddy's for kids the stress of yesterday i went home and all of a sudden i'm in handcuffs at the house it's 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 just trying my best to see things through the lens of the kids not just him specifically. And then I wanted him to know, irregardless of what he's being accused of and going through, as Minister Louis Farrakhan said, when a man is down, don't laugh at him. Don't make a mockery of him. Don't beat him down. Don't beat him down with your words. You don't have to agree with what somebody did. You don't have to even want to be associated with what somebody did. But everybody deserves prayer the stress of yesterday I went home and all of a sudden I'm in handcuffs at the house. You should be. It's, it's, it's just trying my best to see things through the lens of the kids, the next tale, this not is just him good. specifically. Oh and then I wanted him to know, irregardless of what he's being accused of and going through. Shut up, shut up, shut up. All right, so that's Tyree Child giving his whole take. He says that the, the twins go to the school with his oldest daughter. Oh, that's great. But bottom line is you must understand and know that Diddy has been out here on his R. Kelly bullshit for quite some time. Trafficking and RICO charges are serious offenses. These are federal crimes that are going to cause him to be locked the hell up. Now, he didn't think about his kids. I, I'm glad that you're thinking about them. Okay, because like Mama D said, you left my you left my son for that. Y'all remember she said that shit on uh on Love and Hip Hop. Talking about Scrappy told Bambi that you left my son, told uh Erica Dixon, you left my son for that. Did you up and hop the flight and left your damn kids? So if you don't care about your kids, why well, I'm gonna care more about your kids than you? You didn't give a damn about them kids. Tyrese, you need to be worried about your own damn kids and, and what you got going on. I think, you know, everybody is sympathetic to see somebody, a black man fall, but the black man put himself in that situation and his cocky attitude to where he felt like nobody could touch him, that he's untouchable. Well, guess what, nigga? You got touched. Just like you were touching other people and all these damn FOs and setting up FOs and got all these runners out here 
Like you've been you've been doing a lot, Diddy. So spare me this whole you know bullshit about oh uh, black man down. Let's pray for his sons. Well, guess what? One of his sons, one if not two of them, has something to do with the FOs I'm hearing and the trafficking and out recruiting and going to get girls. I ain't about to pray for you because you knew what you were doing. What I'm praying for you for? You knowingly went out and recruited girls allegedly. For your dad, at your dad's request, you grown men now. Your, his kids are grown. His, his boys are grown. You know what you're doing. You know right from wrong. So what I'm praying for you for? I'm praying that the case gets sped up. That's my prayer. Because think about all the women that were violated and made to do things that they didn't want to do at the hand of Diddy. We already talked about how he was putting shit in girls' drinks, making them drink things, spiking drinks. The way they don't know where the hell they are, allegedly, and made to do things. And now we're hearing, while we're talking about Diddy, that Carisha, honey, Carisha is out here uh, also in the mess. She's a runner. She's a part of the trafficking. She's a part of the trafficking. They're saying that Carisha, honey, Carisha, Carisha, from the City Girls, honey, Young Miami, is said to have uh well no we ain't gonna say it said to because this is on court documents that she honey was trafficking the pink coquiana to diddy from miami florida to new york on a private plane to diddy okay we already know she was part of the fo's i knew that when i saw the fingernails the white fingernails that was a telltale sign because uh cassie had already put it in her deposition that that were that was the things that, that diddy liked for his women to have white nails during the fo's when I saw Carisha with them white nails, I said, bitch, you ain't on it too. So she wasn't his girlfriend. That's kind of how, how R. Kelly used to do with the girls, the young girls with him. He would call them his girlfriends, but really he was trafficking these girls. Same thing that's going on with Diddy and these women. He did the same thing to Cassie. Cassie was trafficked. I don't give a damn what nobody say. Carisha, you were in on it too because you slipped up and said to one of Diddy's other previous girls, don't make me make him make you get on your knees for me. So how he going to make somebody else do something for you? That spoke volumes. That spoke volumes. See how you run your mouth too much. And everybody's watching now. Everybody's pulling up stuff now. So ever since Lil Rod that went out here and filed his lawsuit, okay, which is so many pages, they done added like another 15, 20 pages to this damn deposition from Lil Rod, from all the shit that Diddy's done. And so many people's names are being brought up in it. Usher, you might be brought up too, which is why your ass and ran over there to go check up on Russell Simmons. What you doing all the way in Bali? You trying to be a roommate over there in Bali with uh, Russell Simmons? You trying to be a roommate with, with, with Russell Simmons? Y'all know he done took his ass over there. To, and, and Kamara was like, this is funny. What Usher doing over there with, with, with uh, Russell? Because we already know that you done hand delivered over Justin Bieber to Diddy. Oh, yeah. Usher signed. That was his protege. Go look it up. Usher signed and was, uh, what they call it, grooming. We'll say grooming. Grooming is a nice word to plug there. Grooming and uh, 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 mentoring Justin Bieber, the little white boy. Handing him over to Diddy. What the hell did he hanging out with her? At the time, Justin Bieber was, what, 14, 15 years old? Y'all saw the video. Everybody's seen it by now. You should have. Where they went live and did it tell him, we're going to go out for this whole 48-hour party. And who the fuck is partying? You you 30-something, 30, 30, 40 years old. Why are you partying with a 15-year-old? What, what, is, what is the comparison there? So, uh, Usher, you know what was going on because you done sat up in interviews after interviews talking about that you seen some stuff in Diddy's house that you probably should have seen that traumatized you to this day that you will never forget. And when they asked you, would you allow your own sons to hang around Diddy or be around Diddy, you said, fuck no. So if you would not allow your own sons to be or your own children to be around Diddy, why would you let a 14, 15 year old that you were supposed to be mentoring and watching be around this person that you know had pedophilia behaviors, allegedly, was doing FOs, had all these wild SEX parties in his home, the same home that your mother allowed you to go stay in in New York. So as a child, and you said, and I, played it in the, I played the interview yesterday for you guys in my uh, live where Usher had to tell Diddy, look, I want to do music. 
I've been here for weeks and you told me we're going to work on my album. I'm ready to get in the studio. Diddy wanted him to party. Diddy wanted everybody to party. He wanted to get high and he wants to party. And it's no different, but I blame Usher. Usher, your name going to come up in this somewhere. Because you knew about it. You knew about it. And Justin Bieber was traumatized. If you go back and look at the video where he was talking to Diddy, where Diddy was promising him the uh, the little sports car. And then go back and look at the video where they were in the studio where uh, Diddy done popped up on damn uh, uh, Justin Bieber talking about why you didn't call me. I've been trying to call you. I've been trying to get in touch with you. The boy was sitting there stuttering. He was so damn nervous. Completely different atmosphere, completely different vibe. You could tell that something that happened to that boy. And then you see videos where Justin Bieber is in the club going down on grown ass men. Y'all saw that video. We can't play it on here. Odell Beckham, to be exact. He was there with Odell Beckham, Odell Beckham, and uh, Trey Songs. Y'all remember in the club, somebody shined a light on him, some kind of video, and Justin Bieber realized that he was being uh, recorded. And he got up like this because they had like a little light up in his face. He was like, damn. He was down there going to town on Odell Beckham. That's the type of shit he was subjected to. And all he wanted to do was sing. Hella, he's hella talented. The boy played instruments. He can sing well. He can perform well. He was groomed by Usher. He was trained by Usher. And if you watch him perform, he has a lot. If you watch him, little tidbits. Thank you so much, Tyra. He has a lot of uh, similarities in his um, performances as Usher. Okay. The little white Usher, so to speak. Okay. That, that's what I call him. But uh, yeah, so little, so so young Miami is uh, involved in this bullshit as well. Uh, I do have some court documents I want to read to you guys because we on our shit today. Okay, I already got the stuff uploaded. All right, let's go ahead and share our screen because I want you guys to be able to see and or read with me. All right, like they say in church, read with me. Okay, we're gonna read together. Okay, yeah. All right, so this is sensitive content. Social users react to claims that Young Miami was Diddy's SEX worker and the COKE uh, and transported it on a private jet for him in SEX trafficking lawsuit, okay? SEX workers received payment via wire transfer. Why? Because that's traceable. That's traceable. The only way you can't trace something is if you do it in cash. And I ain't trying to tell nobody how to be no criminal out here. But if you're doing wire transfers, if you're selling motherfuckers out here on some fraudulent and, and some illegal bullshit, it's traceable. So that's gonna get your ass locked up right there too. If you're gonna be a, if you're gonna be a criminal, be a smart one. And not that I, you know, I, I don't condone that. But if you're gonna do the shit, do it right. Now you out here got wire transfers for booty payments. And your ass gonna be in jail. Let's go on and read what they're saying. This says it's no secret that Little Rod started a forest fire, honey, after accusing Diddy of forcing him to sleep with SEX workers, watch him shower nude, and groom him into accepting a uh, homo sexual relationship and more. It says that the lawsuit was amended and more information is now available, which includes shocking claims about young Miami, as which you guys may know her as Carisha, okay, from the City Girls. All right. Says a young Miami, which was Diddy's former girlfriend, lies, uh, says it was listed as an alleged SEX worker for the now disgraced music mogul. Says that in the lawsuit that he alleges that Diddy's SEX workers, young Miami, another girl named Jade, another girl named Daphne Joy or Daphne Joy, rather, would receive wire transfers. Pay, uh, cash payments from Robin Greenhill. So just like R. Kelly had someone handling the payments for his alleged girls who would always go out with the girls when they had to go shopping, kind of like an overseer, so to speak. So uh, Diddy, he also had an overseer to make sure that the girls, honey, was paid. She was in charge of the girls, kind of like Della Reese. Okay, the Della Reese of the, of the traffickers, if you will. All right, let's continue. It says that Little Rod, honey, alleges that the that this SEX ring, which is allegedly organized by Diddy, okay, and members of other music companies. See, I told y'all last night that there are some higher ups that were uh, included in this, but they are going to wash their hands of this situation because they're not going to go down because they have now sacrificed Diddy to take the fall in this situation. All right. It says that they are also included minors. Y'all hear that? 
music companies, other music companies were involved, and this also included minors. It says that he says that he witnessed several parties where minors were given alcohol and D-U-R-G-S. Says that he says that being there made him uncomfortable. He says, but Diddy allegedly took his car keys and wouldn't let him leave, girl. Who child is so much, y'all. It says it goes on to say that that's not the only time that he felt pressured by Diddy. Says that in 2022 that he says that Diddy invited him into a bathroom to do uh, the Kokiana and asked Little Rod, did he have a hundred dollar bill? Says when Little Rod said no, says that Diddy allegedly waited to do to do it with Young Miami. Says that in the amended version, says that Little Rod details how Diddy allegedly loves pink Kokiana and combination of the uh, ecstasy and Kokiana that he got from his drug mule, Brendan Paul, which we all know the white boy I showed you guys yesterday, which I told you guys, he always had the Louis Vuitton bag with him, which also carried the D-U-R-G-S for Diddy, okay? You guys know who Brendan Paul is. If you watched my show yesterday, that's who the white boy is that's always seen with Diddy. Do I have the picture? I probably can show you guys because I know I don't throw nothing away. Brendan Paul is the white guy that's always seen with Diddy. Let me see. Do I got the picture still? I know I do. I know I do. Where you at, sir? Where you at? Where you at? Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I know I got it uploaded. It's uploaded, I think. <sighs> uh, I know I got it. Okay, let's continue. We're going to read. I, we'll, we'll show it later. I know I got it, though. All right, so let's continue. Let's continue. Since when he said no. Da, 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 da. Okay, uh, from Brendan Paul, okay. Uh, so he got the D-U-R-G-S from Brendan Paul. That's, that's the guy who always kept the D-U-R-G-S for Diddy in the black uh, Louis Vuitton bag, who was arrested this past Tuesday, okay, which was yesterday. Says that in the lawsuit that uh, one time Diddy wanted Kokiana so bad after one of his dealers forgot it. Says that Young Miami brought it uh, for him on a private jet, okay. Says that Homeland Security has confiscated all Diddy's electronics. So more, this is, uh, so for more, so more information on the case uh, will be um, available soon. All right, so let's continue. All right, because guess what we got here? Oh, some court documents. Shout out to the Neighborhood Talk, okay? We're going to read just a little bit of this, and then we're going to move it on, honey. All right, now it says the SCX workers in uh, Mr. Jones' bed the morning after being D-U-R-G-G-E-D, okay? Uh, on uh, Pinpoint 85 here, it says uh, on another occasion in Miami, Florida, on Thanksgiving night of 2022, that Mr. Combs asked Mr. Jones and uh, Defrost Taylor to enter the studio bathroom. Says that he asked them for a hundred dollar bill because he wanted to do the Kokiana with them. Said that Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a hundred dollar bill. So Mr. Combs waited a little later to do the Kokiana with young Miami. Okay, so she was doing the Kokiana with him. Says that later that evening that he required Mr. Jones to solicit SEX workers from Booby Trap. <laughs> Whatever that is, on the river located at 3615 Northwest South River Drive, Miami, Florida. Okay, it says that Mr. Jones did so, and Mr. Combs forced him to engage in unsolicited SEX acts with these workers. Chow, chow. All right, it goes on to say down here on uh, number 197 says that Robin Greenhill, okay, the accountant, that's the person that handled the money to pay the SEX workers, would ins would ensure would ensure that the wiring funds and transfer funds or cash payments to SEX workers Frankie Santella, Moy Bond, and Brendan Paul, which is the uh, drug lord, okay, uh, and KK would also be responsible for ensuring payment to SEX workers in cash, okay. So Brendan looked like he had a nice little uh, resume, honey. He made sure he had the Copiana and all the other uh, DURGSs that he had, and he also made sure that the SEX workers were paid as well. It goes on to say that Young Miami, Jade, and Daphne Joy were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs' SEX workers and received payment via wire transfer from Robin Greenhill, which outlined defendants' ongoing criminal operations. Okay. Ooh, child. They go on to say here, so Young Miami doing the Kokiana and got some uh, crazy cousins out here. Says that Diddy's sons uh, are dirty as him. Diddy and his sons uh, pow-pow the man and left him there. Says that Diddy ruined Shine's life. Q 
Cuba Gooden is also a diddler, <laughs> not a diddler girl, says that uh, this ain't the last victim that we're going to see. That's also why Miss Carisha so damn quiet. She has been quiet, y'all. She really has. Says that not young Miami being an SCX worker for Diddy and doing the Kokiana with him, child. Look at Nene's face. <laughs> So this is different people are uh, reacting. Okay. Another person said all of the terrible uh, ASS or well, ass things that I'm sure are in this document. Young Miami doing the Kokiana is what was most important to highlight. Says it used condoms for brains. <laughs> oh my God. Says that uh, ninjas in court documents for SES trafficking and y'all bringing up the Kokiana. Says that young Miami doing the Kokiana is the least of the fucking problem. I agree. Okay. Uh, this person here says that young Miami talking about where where did her hate train come from? Uh, says that Biatch, you're literally weird. Says that doing the Kokiana sitting around complacent while your billionaire boyfriend drugged and uh, R worded men and underage girls. Says that knowing all these things and not seeing anything is just as bad. I totally agree with that. What do y'all think about that? Uh, what do y'all think about that? This other person says so. Cassie was a worker and doing the DURGS, but she's a victim. And Miami is a villain. That's what somebody had to say. Uh, let me read one more comment. It says that for the ones who are comparing Cassie to Miami, it says it's a difference when you are forced to do something and when you are inclined to do something. I totally agree. Okay. Cassie was forced. Uh, young, uh, young Miami uh, was doing it for the money and for the free Kokiana. Okay. So I told y'all when I saw the white nails with her, when Cassie said it in the deposition that he always wanted his SEX workers to wear white nails. And it's no coinky ding that they've also talked about Mama Cones, who I think is also going to be named in this particular lawsuit. Because I've been kind of following this real close. Mama Cones is said to have been a recruiter of the girls. It was said that she had some company where she was having girls come in and kind of... um. Uh, making it seem like she's looking for models, but these girls are also used as SEX workers. So Mama Cones with them white nails, as you guys saw in one of the lives that I showed you guys, where she was kissing Diddy in the mouth. Uh, they said in the last that she may also be named in this said lawsuit as well, because she may be one of the recruiters of the women for the FOs. How the fuck do you get your mama involved in this? How do you get your mama in this? So she is, she, she, she's kind of, She's kind of uh, making it look like it's for modeling. So when you call the number, uh, say, hi, yes, uh, I'm calling this number because I see you guys are looking for models. Oh, yes, yes, we're looking for models. You want to come down and audition? And then when you get there, it's some other bullshit. Take this drink right here. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and take this drink right quick. And then when you drink the shit, it's, it's spiked with something else. Because they say that all the drinks that the girls get over there are uh, spiked. Okay. That white nail polish. Okay. Guess who else had that white nail polish? Lori Harvey. Lori Harvey. She was getting a nice bag over there too. She heard him and got the fuck out of there. Lori Harvey, you need to, we, we need to hear from you, ma'am. Because you was wearing that white nail polish too. And, and, and according to a few guys in the industry that's done been messing with you, baby, we're going to go and put it out there. We're going to talk about it. Let's talk about it. A few guys in the industry said that Lori Harvey is a big old freak out here. And that's what Diddy keep around him. He only want women that big old freaks. Now, y'all know good and damn well that Lori Harvey was way too young to be dating Diddy. And she also dated his son. So I said that whole thing was a whole setup to make it look like she was a girlfriend, just like he did with Cassie. Cassie was not a girlfriend. She was made to be in FOs and be recorded. She talked about how she always stayed high the entire time while she was with Diddy until now she is still suffering from some type of brain damage. She still is suffering from having um, like different things going on with like headaches and things like that from being on so much of what Diddy had her pumped up with during the time that she was there for years. Lord Harvey, baby, you was in trafficking, allegedly. And allegedly and allegedly. She was too damn young to be with him. And the fact that Steve Harvey and Margarini Harvey ain't said shit about that. I wonder how y'all feel now that you see the feds done bust up and through his house and he's being charged with Rico charges because Steve, you was out here saying, oh, he's such a nice man. Oh, he's a stand up guy. Bullshit. What the feds doing over there? What Homeland Security done kicked his damn door in and ransacked his house and charging this man? Charging this same man that you said was a stand up guy, Diddy, with Rico charges, trafficking charges. Uh, then his the, the guy that was with him charged with DURG charges. He gonna take the fall for that because Diddy, like, look, I can't help you, bitch. You see all this shit I got going on over here? Yeah, you on your own. Figure that out. Figure that out. 
because he never carried his own D-U-R-G-S. He always had somebody to carry just in case somebody popped up on the ass, just like he never carried any weapons. When J-Lo was with them, when Cassie was saying in the deposition that she had to carry his pow pow when they went somewhere. Go back and read the deposition when she said that somebody told Diddy when they were at a hotel, Diddy had some kind of falling out years ago with Suge Knight. And I remember it off the top of my head. I don't even look at no notes. Diddy, somebody came back and told Diddy that Suge Knight, because Diddy and Suge Knight had some words and came back and told Diddy, he was I as hell, that Suge Knight was at a um, restaurant down the street from the hotel where they were. Diddy told Cassie to get his pow pow and put it in her purse. She said she's never touched a pow pow. She's always been scared to be around pow pows, but she had to carry Diddy's pow pow in her purse. And she said she was so damn scared. So he don't never, Diddy is never going to take the fall for his bullshit. And I believe with all of these charges that's facing Diddy, Diddy is getting ready to start talking and other people are going to go down with him. Kind of like how R. Kelly is trying to do. Now that R. Kelly is facing all this time, now he wants to cooperate and talk about other rappers and everybody else that was coming to the studio and messing with young girls. He's already talked about Jay-Z. He's already talked about other men in the industry that were involved with the bullshit that he was involved with. Well, guess what, sir? Guess what, sir? They got you. They want the big fish. I told y'all. And if they want to work their way down, then that's what they do. They want the big fish first. Jay-Z already said is next. Mark my words. I'm saying it right here on my show. Are we recording? Yes, we are. <laughs> Jay-Z, you next. Once they bring Diddy down, because the higher ups, the higher elites have washed their hands of Diddy. Think about all the things Diddy done got away with. For years, R. Kelly got away for 30 years. That's unheard of. But his money's running out. That's why he sold revolt. Then he got to have money for these high-powered lawyers to get out of some of this shit. And he ain't going to get out of it. He ain't going to beat it. And it would not surprise me if he's getting ready to put some shit in some offshore court accounts. Some offshore accounts. Because he might be planning to run as well. Hopefully, they confiscated his damn passports. Hopefully, with all the shit he's got going on right now, if he would get on a private plane and leave his kids, you better believe it. And there's no telling what they're going to find because if they if they captured all of his 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 uh, electronics in that house where he could be hiding, because they said Diddy recorded everything, kind of like R. Kelly. He recorded everything. He had cameras all over the house in his children's room. Bathrooms had cameras. Everywhere in Diddy's house had cameras. So imagine if he had FOs at his house. And I'm also finding out, too, that there was some type of underground something going on at one of Diddy's houses in, I think it was L.A., the same house that got raided. They found some type of underground tunnel thing for traffickers, you guys. So they're saying something about they were parked down the street and they didn't want to elude the neighbors to make the neighbors think, oh, it's so much company coming. You know, when you stay beside somebody and they have like a lot of cars coming in and out of there, you be like, oh, that's a drug house. So in order for them to keep the um, traffic down from people, you know, suspecting there's something weird or something uncouth that's going on at the house, they were coming through a different entrance. And it was kind of like a little underground type situation where they were coming in a different way. They said it was like some type of tunnel bullshit that they found. I'm going to look more into that. But that's what was told to me. He does not still have Ciroc anymore. Uh, Diageo uh, owned the uh, Ciroc bottles, uh, the Ciroc liquor that Diddy was uh, in partnership with. Ciroc uh, and Diageo decided to pull that from him and cut ties with him after Cassie's case came up, okay? Uh, as you guys know, y'all can go and verify it. I, I try to give you guys as much information as I can and make it as accurate as I can. But once this case with uh, once Diddy uh, settled the case with Cassie Diageo, which was the owner of the Ciroc bottles, they cut all ties with Diddy. They didn't want nothing to do with him. And just like Revolt TV, they stepped back as well. And he still owned some shares to it. But now that Diddy is damn near broke with that case going on with Cassie where he had paid a hundred million allegedly did his money is kind of funny right now. So that's why he had to cut Carisha off because he was paying her royally. Carisha was getting paid good because she wasn't just the person who was bringing him the Kokiana. She was also doing the FOs. She was also recruiting. She was also, y'all know, Carisha had a lot of titles. 
So she was doing a lot of work. It was at one point that she was getting paid 250000 a month, they were saying. And it was also said in the ledge before that he was paying her up to five hundred k a month. So she was working her ass off. You don't think she worked for that money? You don't think Arisha worked for that money? Some of y'all saw her out on Diddy's arm, kind of like Cassie was. She was working. I don't know, girlfriend. I knew some shit was funny when I saw it. All right. Moving on, though. OK, uh, another person who I uh, have spoken up, 50 Cent has uh, he's, he's jumping in on all this. Y'all know what all this stuff coming out about Diddy uh, back in December. Uh, 50 Cent made it known that he wanted to do a surviving Diddy. OK, I kind of talked about it here on my show. Uh, so 50 Cent is speaking up again. Uh, he says that he is thinking about and he is um, thinking about moving forward and proceeding with the Surviving Diddy documentary. As I said, back in December, he had already mentioned that he was going to do that and that someone should do it. He was happy to do it because y'all know he don't fool with Diddy at all. He don't like Diddy, period. 50 Cent and Diddy don't get along. So he's happy to do a documentary Surviving Diddy, kind of like how Surviving R. Kelly was. And that's how they were able to bring uh, R. Kelly down after this whole Surviving R. Kelly documentary. So what better way to bring Diddy down than to do a Surviving Diddy? Because everything is going to come out. Women are going to start talking. The floodgates are going to open up to women that we don't even know about yet that were involved in some, some very grimy shit, underground shit that Diddy had going on. That's going to be ready to speak up in this damn documentary to get a little check because the women, the girls, the victims did get a nice little check for being in the documentary. So, hey, what better way to get them to come out of the hiding child and cut them a little check, you know, cut them a little check, say, hey, come over here and tell me what you went through with Diddy. And we get all the business. And I'm going to be right there watching this shit because I love documentaries. I'm going to be on that shit. And I might have to review it, too, because y'all know a plethora of shit going to come out because he's been doing this for a long time. He dates all the way back to the 90s. Diddy's bullshit dates all the way back to the 90s. What are we in 2024? That's a lot of hoeing going on. I'm just saying. All right. So, yeah. So we're going to be waiting for that. Uh, uh, 50 Cent did speak up. He made a uh, post. He says that this is going to break records when it drops. So he is going, he's stepping up to say that he is happy to do it because he also now has his own production company. Uh, you guys know that he's over all the powers and all of that on Star. So, you know, it's going to be good if 50 Cent got his stamp on it because every show that he put out be given, baby. So, I'm here for it. I think he is the one to put this whole documentary out. And as I get updates on it, you guys know I will let you guys know it as well, okay? Another person who's speaking up about Diddy is Uncle Luke. You guys know who he is, okay? Y'all remember Uncle Luke back in the day, honey? Well, you out here clapping your booty out here. <laughs> Him. All right, so he speaks on why he chose to leave Diddy parties early, child. Everybody talking about Diddy. Why is everybody turning on Diddy? Everybody was cool with Diddy. Everybody was friends with Diddy. Y'all was going to the FO parties and all that. And now that his ass done got caught, Homeland Security done bust his damn windows out and his doors off the damn hinges. Ain't no doors on the hinges over there after they ass done left. Now everybody turning against Diddy. Y'all not friends with him no more. Y'all like no new friends when it comes to Diddy ass. When y'all was right up over there, kissing and touching and rubbing all up in the damn FO parties. But let's get into it though. Oh, God. All right, so let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, so there he is, honey. He is telling why he left these damn parties early, child. Let's let him tell you, girl. All right, Uncle Luke, child. Let's let Uncle Luke tell you, girl. All right, Uncle Luke. All right, let's see. Shout out to TMZ, okay? Shout out to TMZ. TMZ can provide. Download the TMZ app today. For the ad, rather. Give me one moment. All right, since so Uncle Luke said, I love you. But it's brilliant. Here's why. Boom. It was uh, Puff Daddy was like, "Yeah, we want you to come uh, and uh, be in this video." You know, I don't, I don't, I ain't, I ain't on every scene. You feel me? Right. I, I, I just vibe with with my my folks. So when they, people call up all the time, like, "Yo, come be in the video and all that," I don't just be. You don't be pulling up pop unless you want. Like yeah. Nah, did you? Did you? But right did shit. you party with Diddy a lot? Oh uh, no, not really. I would go to the party and and leave early. Why wouldn't you stay? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I go to the party and leave early. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I was not invited to too many of those parties. Why didn't I mean, you? To, why didn't you stay late? Like after hours, was it, did it get know. crazy after that or what? I, I don't know what goes on after part after hours, but he wasn't trying to find out. I wasn't trying to find out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know my place. You know, you feel, yeah, I know my place. Yeah. You know, so I, I went to a couple. Um, uh, what it is. Uh, uh, New Year's Eve parties, right? I mean, I know, I know, Puff before Puff became super big like that. You know, 
He a cool dude. I mean, all the shit going on with him. You know, I feel sorry for him and his family, more right. so his kids. His kids, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got right. People got kids involved in this mm-hmm. shit. And you know, and social media is dangerous. Mm-hmm. You don't know no it's always two, two, three sides of a story. All right. That's what he had to say, child. <laughs> That's what he had to say, child. All right. Let's go ahead and stop that. Uh so shout out to TMZ, okay? Shout out to TMZ on that. Let's go ahead and mute that so it don't play again. So yeah, that's what Uncle Luke had to say. Child, y'all know he nasty. Uncle Luke was something nasty back in the day. So if his ass is getting up out of there and he don't want to be around Diddy after a certain time of night, you already know what it is. He know what kind of time Diddy was on. If Uncle Luke is saying, I don't hang with this motherfucker after a certain time, I'm out. Baby, you already know what, what kind of mess Diddy was on, okay? But everybody is turning against Diddy. They are ostracizing Diddy. Y'all know he's been banned from the Grammys. Like, people people like, we don't want to sit by Diddy. We don't want to be around Diddy because he's a nasty he's a nasty nigga out here. Okay? So people are just not fooling with him, all right? Another person, one more person I'm going to play for you guys, Torre. If you guys remember Torre, Torre actually did uh, a very good interview back in the day with R. Kelly to where he got R. Kelly to openly admit that he liked teenage girls do y'all remember that interview where he says um how young do you like he said do you like teenage girls and and r kelly said how young are you talking and torrey said teenage girls (laughs) so r R kelly kind of stuck his own foot up his ass when he said that because he was like do you do you date underage girls and r kelly said how young are you talking nigga you supposed to say no Don't say how young are you talking. You're supposed to say no when somebody asks you, do you date underage girls? Okay. I see y'all putting that Mr. Doodle Brown. That was the song, won't (laughs) y'all? Doodle Brown. Doodle Brown. That was the song. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, get this pulled up for you guys where Torre is talking about this as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get that pulled up for ya. Let me get that pulled up for ya. Trying to get y'all all the good news today, guys. Trying to get y'all all the good news. Give me one second. Give me one second. I thought I had all this shit pulled up, y'all. I'm sorry. I usually be. Okay, is that it? Give me one second. Give me one second. No, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh my God. Okay, here you go. Here you go. I knew I had it. All right. So that's Torre. That's Torre. He's a journalist, you guys. Okay. All right. All right. So, all right. Let's share with you guys so you guys can see with me. Okay. I'm enjoying the sharing thing. I like for you guys to be able to see with me. Okay. So, y'all know I ain't just over here making shit up. All right. Close that. Okay, so let's go back up to the top so you guys can see who Torre is. This is Torre right here, okay? This is Torre where my mouse is moving, okay? He is a journalist, all right? It says the journalist Torre claims that Diddy tried to olest his young male family member, okay? Diddy was supposed to be uh, mentoring one of his family members, all right? So it says that Torre, a respected journalist who works for the... To, works for the Grio is spilling the tea about Sean Diddy Combs and Toure claims that Diddy once tried to Oles with an M, uh, a young male family member who was interning for Diddy. Okay. You see the two of them shaking hands. That is Toure. Of course, y'all know that's Diddy child. His blouse. Let's go on down child. It says that, um, that it is confirmed that Toure explains, uh, on Joy Reid's MSBC show, MS, MSNBC show says that I know Diddy well enough that I call him and said that I have a family member that I'd like to hire or that I'd like for you to hire as an intern. And he said, yes. Okay. It continues by saying, says that my family member was flying around on jets and with Diddy in Miami and Atlanta says that then the internship stopped abruptly three or four months into it. Says that years later, they finally told me and says that this person was a male. Said that Puff said, come to my home, come, said, come to my home and spend the night with me or the intern is over. So Puff told his cousin who spoke, who he supposed to been interning with to come to his night and come to his house and spend the night with him or he's going to end his internship. He says, and my family member said, absolutely not. And he says that the internship was ended. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and play here on uh, NBC, MSNBC, uh, where Ture sat down and did an interview where he talked about how Diddy did his nephew, okay? 
here we go. No sound? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What happened? Hold on. Hold on. I don't know why it's doing that again. Okay, I see you guys. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Hold on. Here we go with that again. Oh, Lord. Can y'all hear me? Okay, y'all can hear me. Okay, y'all can hear me. I'm not sure why the sound is going out. That's weird. That's weird. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let's try it another way. Because I don't want to refresh because I don't want to lose you guys. Okay, hold on. I'm going to pull it up this way and I'm going to play it on my phone. We're going to get this today. The devil is a lie. Okay. The devil is a lie. All right, we're going to get into it. All right, I got it pulled up here. I'm going to play it on my damn phone. I know y'all going to hear it then. All right. All right, so let's back that thing up. Let's make it big. All right, hold up. Belonging to rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Yeah, no, I don't want that. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Can y'all still hear me? Everybody can hear me? Please put a one in the chat if you can hear me. Put a one if you can hear me. Put a one if you guys can hear me. I want to make sure everyone can hear me before we proceed, okay? Thanks for being here. It's Chrissy time, okay? It says, what's up, real glad to catch you on the live. Okay, everybody can hear me great. All right. It's a tree. Okay, so yeah, we got that. All right, so let's go back. Because I want you guys to be able to hear this, okay? I'm going to play it on my phone since this damn uh, stream your bullshit when I act a fool. Yep. Yesterday, federal agents executed search warrants at two properties in Los Angeles and Miami belonging to rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs. A source familiar with the matter told NBC News that Combs is the subject of a federal investigation following a wave of lawsuits that have been filed against him. Those lawsuits, including from his former girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, alleged physical and sexual abuse, which Combs has denied. The source also confirmed no that three women and a man have been interviewed by federal officials in Manhattan in relation to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms. Late today, Combs's lawyer issued the following statement. Quote, yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There was no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, Thank nor so has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This, this unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There's been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Unquote. Joining me now is Tore, host of Masters of the Game. The new season premieres Friday on the Grio. Uh, what is going on? Because we did also see... Uh, Diddy's sons arrested. They were detained. They weren't arrested. They were just detained. But what is going on? Well, it, it seems that there are several people who are saying things about Combs to the government, and they are trying to figure out what's going on. I found it interesting that they had enough to get a search warrant, right, yeah. for multiple places, but not enough yet to arrest him. So we're in the investigation phase, and clearly they don't care. Right. They let him know what that we know what's going on. Yeah. 
But it seems part of uh, part of this whole life, this whole journey has been this sort of scorched earth campaign where you see him continuing to succeed or do big things and leave people in his wake hurt. We go back to CCNY, which he a, a party that he over promoted that people yes. ended up getting killed. You think about the many artists who either left, you know, in complaint or went to the church or, you know, died Thanks. after, you okay. know, I mean, there was a lot of dis a lot of disheartened artists who left him yeah. that he raised up and, uh, on and on um and now this this thank large, you so much Cherise, for the number of people dear. who are alleging crazy stuff yes. about him yeah. and these are things that people in the industry have been hearing about it's giving time. r kelly to right it's giving it's 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 disturbing you know I was personally disturbed many years ago. Okay, go, I, guys. I, Listen to this. I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I and he said yes. And they were flying around one of the interns atlanta miami whatever on the jet in the house whatever and then the internship stopped abruptly like three or four months into it yeah and i spoke to my family member like well, what happened and they wouldn't say yeah and i'm like what what do you why did it end they wouldn't yeah. say and years later they finally came out and this is a male yeah and said that uh puff had said come home stay the night with me or the internship is over and mm. they said absolutely not he said absolutely not uh, and the internship ended uh but from there i was like oh like oh, this is this is God. how it goes okay yeah. okay so to hear that things went even further with potentially allegedly many other people yeah it, it, it's it's not i don't it, you know we we feel like we've seen this coming well, there was the situation with obviously Russell Simmons, who does not live in the United States any further. You've got, you've had these situations obviously with R. Kelly. This feels like it is going down that kind of a track because you have multiple accusers with nothing proved. He's not been adjudicated a, you know, whatever. But People it's just talking video. And he paid Cassie a lot of money. A, a lot of money, and uh, you know, the, the people are coming with videos though. I mean, like evidence, not just hearsay. So I mean, this is a very very frightening situation. There was a period in the record business when a lot of wildness was going on yeah. of this sort. And sure. here's another shoe drop. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I think, talk about where he says, because what he's saying sounds very Trumpy. Yeah. It's talking about a witch hunt. Yeah. Uh, I had somebody text me earlier today. I think I texted you today and forwarded it to you that somebody is saying, watch for him to try to weaponize sort of a Trump sort of narrative or watch the Trump people try to weaponize what's happening in favor of Trump to say, look, there's this persecuted black man like me that who's like me and try to weaponize it. Man, it I feels hate, very Trumpish. I, I hate to say that anyone is like Trump, but there is something in the rise, the long term rise of Puff and that he seemed to create his own reality to yeah. demand that everyone around him follow what he wanted yeah and people did he had a ton of money behind him to start bad boy at a very young age yeah and would just treat me i mean he's called me up and screamed at me on more than one occasion and lots yeah. of people would say that so the ego was gigantic the yeah. ability to create the reality that he wanted yeah. seemed to be there but also to create a reality that was dangerous i mean i think for a lot of hip-hop fans the the, the, the failure to protect notorious big the feel, you know, the, the sort of egging on of an East Coast West Coast rivalry between friends that were people Thanks who so knew and respected Katie. each other and didn't have to be beefing, and to sort of let that violence come. You know, I think for a lot of us, uh, and that, and also oversampling and uh, making hip hop into a sample machine. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna end it there. That's some good stuff right there, y'all. That's some good stuff right there. I like Toure. Toure does a lot of great interviews. Go back and YouTube him, pull him up, follow him on social media. When I tell you this guy gets like into the nitty gritty of things. Oh my God, uh, Angela Huna. Let me let me uh, acknowledge some super stickers here, okay? Let me acknowledge because you guys are showing out tonight, okay? Thank you so much, Linda Cavey. Let's go ahead and put you up first, dear. And I'm gonna double back. I'm gonna spin the block on the other one. Thank you so much for the 199 uh, super chat, okay? I saw another one earlier, okay? You guys are showing out, yes, honey. Thank you for the uh, for the uh, gifted five caramel memberships, girl. Oh, hold on, Chip. Okay, I'm back, child. Ooh, child was giving heart palpitations a little bit. But I uh, thank you, girl. Thank you for that, girl. We love you, honey. Thank you so much, girl. All right. 
All right, so as I was saying about Toure, okay, if you guys do not know who Toure is, if you guys have not followed him, please do. Toure, when I tell you, gets down to the nitty gritty and he gives great interviews. I fell in love with his interviewing skills when I saw him way back in the day when he did his interview with R. Kelly, okay? He knows how to word things and he knows how to go back and say it in a different way. He'll ask you a question and then he'll go back and he'll go into something else and then he'll come back and ask you the same question a different way and trip you up to say some shit you probably shouldn't say. I said, dude, he is one of the best interviewers out there. I like him. <laughs> so you like him as well, Sin? He just has a way of getting it out of you. When he feel like you bullshitting in an interview, he'll let you, he'll kind of, he'll kind of let you ride with that. And then he'll move on to something else. And then he'll spin the block and come back on it and ask you in a different way. And before you know it, you don't say some shit you didn't want to say. I was like, you know what, Torre? Damn it. <laughs> I like you, bro. Okay. I like you, bro. I like people like that. You could probably be an attorney in another life. Thank you so much, Angela. Who knows? Y'all are showing out. Y'all trying, y'all trying to make me cry tonight. Y'all know I'll be emotional now. I don't be over here on my car Thomas bullshit. Okay, but don't y'all don't, don't don't do that to your girl tonight. Now, thank you so much though for the for the super stick. I appreciate I appreciate you guys uh supporting the channel. Okay, I really do. And please let's hit the like button tonight. Okay, guys, because we giving some good information. Okay, we giving some real good information tonight. All right, so what do y'all think about this damn Diddy situation? Do y'all think he gonna go down? Put a one in the chat if you think that Diddy going to prison. Put a two in the chat if y'all think he gonna be able to pay his way out. I bet not see no damn twos. Okay, put a three if you don't give a damn. <laughs> I bet I see no damn twos, okay? Ones and threes, all right? Ones and threes. Put a one if you think he's going to prison, like R. Kelly. Put a two if you think he's going to be able to pay his way out. Put a three if you think that y'all just don't give a damn. Y'all sick and tired of Diddy's bullshit. Y'all don't give a damn. <laughs> Somebody said two. You think he's going to be able to pay his way out? Okay, SD Warren. We'll see. I I, I think, I, listen, I already said, honey, when Homeland Security, when the feds come knocking, they got something. And they don't they got something I'm trying to tell you. And all it takes for them to look at that surveillance and look at some of them videos and see some underage girls and they can identify them. Guess what? That's your ass, Mr. Postman. That's your ass, Mr. Postman. Okay. Yeah. Somebody somebody put one and one and one and a half. <laughs> okay, we'll take one and a half. Okay. We'll take the one and a half. Uh What's the song? You're going to jail. <laughs> You're going to jail. That's how I feel, child. His ass need to go to jail. But uh, let's continue, child. All right. So I got another topic. What, what time are we looking at? Eight. Okay. We're looking at a good time. All right. So uh, a woman is being sued, you guys, by a rental car company. They said she didn't return the car. She said she did. She was arrested and everything. Okay. I have the news thing that I want to share with you guys. And y'all tell me, because uh, I know a lot of you guys probably rent cars. I do. If I go out of town, that's just standard for you to rent a car. A lot of places have the drop-off box if they're closed after hours to where you just drop the key in there and then, you know, you, you drop the car off or whatever. But uh, this particular woman says she returned the damn car and they're saying she did not. So she, they put some handcuffs on her ass and proceeded to take her to the jail. Okay. So let's go ahead on and uh, 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 share that. Because baby, when I saw that, I said, oh, hell no. I know damn well. I hope this, I hope y'all can hear it too. Okay. I'm going to share. Let's share, honey. Okay. So we dare. Let's share. Both of us have rented a car for a vacation or a move or while your car is Y'all hear? Prepared. Everybody hear? With no thought afterwards. Uh, this is what former Las Vegas woman says she did, only to find out years later the car rental company claimed that they never got their car back. But it's what happened next that's even more shocking. A News Now reporter Brian Will shares her experience and why she is fighting back against the company. This bizarre story started here, where Danielle rented a car just like anybody else, but it ended with her in jail for a crime she didn't commit. Do you know anything about a warrant out of Nevada? What? I uh, felt intimidated. Um, you know, I was surrounded by a number of police officers. Um, and I had two of my children with me, my one-year-old and my 15-year-old son. Daniel okay. Bursett sat in jail for six days this past August after Enterprise Rent-A-Car reported the Kia Sedona she rented in 2016 as stolen. 
It was horrible. It was degrading. It was depressing. She had returned the vehicle on October 31st, 2016, after renting it to move from Las Vegas to Pittsburgh. She rented the vehicle on October 3rd, and on October 9th, she called Enterprise and extended her lease until November 1st. According to the lawsuit, she was instructed by an Enterprise employee to park the car and leave the keys under the front seat. Then on February 23rd, 2017, she got an email confirming she had returned the vehicle. It still didn't stop a criminal complaint being filed in Nevada on December 9th, 2016, alleging a felony charge against her for embezzling a rental vehicle on August 5th, 2016, which was more than two months before she had even rented. It. You know, these charges that still exist, you know, even though the, the charges are dismissed or not gone. But what's even more egregious is after we filed this lawsuit, clearly alleging what they had done wrong, they recently, just three days ago, sent a letter to Danielle saying, hey, you damaged this vehicle. Mm. It is compounding issues upon issues. Danielle doesn't want anyone else to experience something like this. So she's speaking out. I would not rent a car again. Never. Now, Brian reached out to Enterprise multiple times regarding this case, and they said they're unable to provide details or comment on pending litigation. Sure. So some advice for you for the next time. You've rent a car when returning it. Look for an agent to return the keys and get a paper receipt. If the office is closed, you can look for a drop box for keys and also inspect the vehicle. Take pictures before and after where you left the keys and save all of your correspondence and rental emails. Hmm. That is a hot damn mess, you guys. That made me so mad when I saw that shit, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Give me one second. Let's pause this so we don't get no. Okay. Yeah, it's done. What do y'all think about that? The woman returned the damn car and she communicated via email and she dropped the, she dropped the car off like they told her to do. Put the keys in the drop box thing and they sent her paperwork and everything, but they still arrested her and didn't turn around and said that the damn uh, car was damaged. Anytime I rent a car, I always put my phone on video. I video, I walk around the car via video because it has like timestamp and all that shit on there. I always do that anytime I, I video inside, I video, I walk all the way around that car before I drive away from that place to make sure I have that in my phone so they won't be sitting here trying to say, well, hey, there's a ding here, there's a dent here. Well, bitch, you won't know that when I rented it, okay? Like, I don't want to hear it. Here's the video where I video the car. Okay. And yeah, you got to be very careful. This shit is so sad. This woman was with her children, one of which was a minor child. And they don't sat here and locked this woman up for six days and she returned this, she returned this car. I would have, yeah, that's what I do, Lesmore. And those that's yeah. Take video. You can't deny that shit. Video. You take pictures too, but I always do video. I do a video. Video inside and out. I video in the trunk. I video every damn thing. Because you ain't about to say I did nothing. Okay? Nothing. Always do that. Make sure you take videos and pictures. Walk around that car. Okay? Yes. Okay? But let's get back to this woman. That's very, very sad that they pinned this on her. Her children were with her. That was very degrading for her to have to sit in jail for something she did not do when she returned the damn car. It's like they had a had it out for this woman. And then you want to turn around and say she damaged the car? Like, yeah, I see y'all putting it in. I would sue them. Absolutely. You would have a fucking lawsuit. You would have a lawsuit. I would sue the fuck out of Enterprise. I've rented from Enterprise before, um, but I don't know, y'all. I I don't know. <laughs> Enterprise, y'all got me scared now. I don't know if I want to fool with y'all no more. I don't know. I don't know if I want to fool with y'all no more after y'all being on this bullshit right here. But I hope that she has initiated a lawsuit and I hope that she gets this situation handled. Um, I'm going to try to look them online and see um, if this situation, if she, fi if she actually filed a lawsuit with them because she should have. She should have. And if they sent you a confirmation email saying, hey, if she extended her rental and they sent you a confirmation email, I don't understand what the problem was. Why did you guys call and, and, and uh, list the car as being stolen when you've already sent her the fucking email? Now, it's kind of giving some fraudulent activity going on here. If I called you and said I need the car for a few more days and you send me an email to say, OK, here's where you extended it. What the fuck you calling the police for? <laughs> I don't understand that. Oh, my God. So. Prayers for her, guys. Prayers for her. Oh, my God. That made me so mad. All right. So um, 
I got one more post that we're going to do and then we're going to get out of here. All right. So a woman goes to a funeral, you guys. And I know a lot of you guys have been to funerals, funerals, funerals. I've been to several funerals. Imagine going to a funeral for a friend and you see some people inside the funeral who didn't necessarily treat said friend that passed away. Uh, treated her right or treated her as she should have been treated. And they're sitting up in the funeral and they're acting like they just love this person to death. Uh, this woman's friend, this woman's friend uh, went up to speak at the funeral to, to give some words and she flew off honey and told the people how she really felt. <laughs> and baby, I was all the way here for it. I said, oh my God, did she really do that? All right, so I'm gonna pull this, I'm gonna pull this up for y'all, baby, because when I saw this, I said, okay, y'all gonna laugh when y'all hear this shit. Uh, I was telling my husband about it before I came online. I said, baby, when I tell you she went off, baby, she went off. All right, so let me find it for you guys. And then, uh, okay, thank God it's right here. Hold up. All right, so let's share so y'all can see it, baby, because she let them know. Y'all ain't about to play in my damn face with my friend, honey. Well, my friend done damn passed away. Y'all ain't going to do that today. All right, so let me back it up so y'all can hear it, baby. Let me cut the sound. You don't have no plausible black. All right, oh. I want to first say I'm going to be the rule breaker and I'm going to need a little bit over one minute. And I apologize to anybody behind me. My name is Mimi. Most of you who don't know me, for 11 years I was in a relationship with her favorite cousin, Mona Lisa. Um, Vina is my A1, my diary, my best friend, the sister she never had. Um, I was honored to give her two godchildren and um, to know her is to love her. <laughs> and to know she was very irritated. <laughs> and I know for a fact she would want me to get up here and say everything I'm about to say. And for all the elders in this room, I want y'all to forgive me because I got a big heart and it's how much I love her. Half of y'all in here, she ain't fuck with. And I'm sorry to say it like that, but y'all real life played on her top when she was alive. I played on her so top. Come in here and give fake, fake love. It's my boy. But I'm going to let y'all have this for today because it's about her. It's the respect. But just know all of it, it never go unnoticed. Y'all try to bully her. Y'all try to treat her like she was less than. When she got a heart of gold and she didn't get a shirt off her back for anybody. And she ain't deserve that. And later on, I'm going to show my ass if y'all know me. But thank you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, she went off this shit. I'm going to let y'all know that she don't aunt with y'all. Girl, you said in the church in the church of the Lord, girl. <laughs> the old, y'all hear the old lady say, oh, that's disrespectful. She was like, oh, y'all, yeah, she didn't fool with y'all. But y'all know when people go up, when somebody have a funeral, you have all kinds of people there, child. Everybody want to get up and talk about how great this person was. Oh, I love this person. You talked all the shit in the world about this person. And she was just being real for her friend, baby. She got up there and let them know, child. <laughs> Baby, yeah, she got up there and cussed in church. She said, she didn't fuck with y'all. I was like, girl, you in the church house. And you in the church of the Lord if you're talking like this. But the old lady, she, the low old lady uh, yelled up there and let her know. She said, that's disrespectful. She was like, you a damn. Y'all ain't about to play on her top in here. I said, did she say play on her top in church? Girl, you ain't never been to church before. Because I'd have been scared to stand up there and say some mess like that in church. I, I grew up, I told y'all, Church of God in Christ. And we were taught, like, you, you you fear God. You don't get up in there and be cussing and carrying on in church, okay? Like a video I saw online where the man said, I'm tired of the devil. Got up there, y'all, they gave him the mic. He got up there testifying. He said, I'm tired of the devil fucking with me. He said, get the fuck behind me, Satan, in church, y'all. I said, that's not how you talk to Satan in church, okay? You cannot tell Satan to get the fuck behind you in church, okay? Like, that was just not. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I'm going to have to find that video because, baby, when I tell you, this man said, I'm tired of Satan fucking with me. He said, get the fuck behind me, Satan, in church, y'all. And the pastor was like, like, give me this mic, okay? Yeah, you can give me the mic now because you're doing too much. I said, yo, what is wrong with people, y'all? You can tell people that ain't really ever been to church and know how to have church etiquette. You don't tell Satan to get the fuck behind you. Just say, get behind me, Satan. Get behind Not get the fuck behind me. Not in church. Child. Baby, that sent me all the way to oblivion, okay? <laughs> but that's it, guys. That's our show for tonight, y'all. <laughs> 
Y'all, that was funny to me. But that is our show, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. Please, please, please hit that like button. Thank you guys so much. Everybody that gave super stickers. Thank you guys that gave memberships. Thank you guys so, so much for all that you guys do for my channel. I really appreciate that you guys, y'all support me heavy. And I appreciate it. All 500 and something y'all that was in the chat tonight. I hope y'all enjoyed the show and all the topics that we gave you guys. I will see you guys in the morning for Car Chronicles, okay? Yes, girl, I'm Church of God in Christ, baby. Yes, ma'am, honey. I sang in the choir and everything. Can't we play the drums and everything? Don't play with me. Yes, God. Mm, 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 mm. Y'all need to play that shout music, child. Yes, girl. <laughs> okay. I came. I came from a family where we sing and we play instruments. Can we play instruments over here too? And I told y'all. So I sing and I play instruments. I do it all, honey. Church of God in Christ. Because my grandmother is a pastor. Okay. My grandmother is a pastor. Well, she's a doctor now. She has a doctorate, but she's a pastor. And baby, yes, I sang, honey, sang in the choir. My mother was a choir that worked back in the day. Okay. So we didn't have a choice but to sing. And uh, when they needed somebody to play the drums, Caramel could get her ass on the drums and, and play the drums. Okay. So we got, we got that skill. So we, I play a couple instruments, but I, yeah, Caramel do a few things over here. Okay. Say same Miss Caramel. Yes, honey, Church of God in Christ. That's how I grew up. Yes, 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 yes. So, yes, honey. Uh, aside from my crazy mouth, sometimes I know my mouth can be a little potty mouth sometimes, but I am church of God in Christ, okay? And I do know how to act when I go to church. I don't be telling Satan to get the fuck behind me. I don't do that, okay? I just tell him to get back, get saved. Yeah. But uh, thank y'all so much, okay? Thank you so much, um, Sharice Christian, for the uh, for the super chats, baby, for the memberships. I appreciate you, okay? And everybody else that gave. Y'all have a beautiful night. I will see y'all in the morning, okay? Hugs to you all. Let me send some hugs to my camera. That y'all know I love y'all. Okay. Uh, please leave some comments. Okay. I can't wait to watch. Can't watch. Wait to watch the replay. Yes, honey. Catch that replay if you're coming in late. Catch the replay. Okay. Because we had a great show for tonight. Very informative. Uh, I know you guys have been watching other channels. Um, other YouTubers that are doing um some stuff on Diddy and all that. I try to dig up as much as I can so that you guys can get the meat and potatoes of what's going on. And any new developments that I get, you of course you guys will get it as well. But I'm gonna go so I can get my car chronicles together for in the morning so you guys can get another great show. I know y'all was laughing y'all ass off this morning, me acting like damn, singing like uh if y'all miss me singing like uh Smokey Robinson this morning, because y'all know I do the voices as well. Y'all missed a treat, baby, because I acted a whole fool this morning, honey. Singing like Smoker Robinson. But y'all have a good day. Check out our Car Chronicles if you did not. Hit the like button on that and hit the like on this as well. Mods, thank you for a great job. Uh, thank you so much. It's Chrissy time for being here. If I miss any other content creators as well, thank y'all for being here as well. All right, let's get on out of here. Love you guys down and bye.